All right, this is a little video uh, showcasing this truck here I got for sale. 77 Ford F-250, 4 by 4 That is factory height, is not lifted. That's how it came. It's on uh, 35 by 12.5 tires. Let me give you a see all walk around the other side where the sun's shining. Tread's pretty healthy. I mean, they're not brand new, but they're uh, they're a good 50% or so. Um, 16 and a half inch aluminum rims, all in real good shape. Let's see here. Right. Take a little walk around. Hood is primered. It's not dented or doesn't have any bondo or anything in it, but it was primered over the original paint before I got it. Don't know why, but. That's how it is. So uh, here's the uh, driver's side. As you can see, the paint's not perfect, but there's no cancer. It's just a little bit of surface rust, you know, from road debris and stuff. It's all original. Um, as far as I can tell, there hasn't been any any body work or anything done to this truck at all. Uh, no major repairs as far as any of that stuff's concerned. It's where the uh, behind the seat tank used to be, I'm guessing. It's been plugged up, doesn't leak into the cab or anything like that. There is no tank behind the seat, it's just uh, just cargo space now. fuel door for the one tank 21 gallon tank under the bed towards the back here sits between the frame rails there's that lighting's not real great so I'm sure you can't see too good but there's no no rust in the fender wells or on the frame or anything it still actually has an undercoating on the frame that's in real good shape rear got a uh, nice class 3 receiver hitch for towing your boat trailer camper whatever there's the bed no rust inside the bed a little tiny bit of surface rust up in the corner but I mean really just surface rust no cancer or anything uh, apparently there was a fuel line or something that broke a long time ago. The guy that owned it before me told me and they were stuck on the side of the road and didn't have the proper tools so they cut a little hole in the bed to get down in there to repair the line. So there's that hole that's been cut right there. Um, just weld a little piece of metal over it if you wanted to. I just hadn't gotten around to doing it because, uh, I don't know, it wasn't really that important to me. <clears throat> This is a heavy duty model. We got a 8,100 pound uh, gross vehicle weight rating. So it's got a heavier duty uh, suspension setup than a lot of three quarter tons do. I think uh, most of them were in the 65 to 7,000 pound range. It's got dual caliper pistons for the front disc brakes. We got uh, the heavy duty three inch wide brakes in the rear got a Dana 60 rear end 410 gears with limited slip keep some extra tools and oil and whatnot um, this seals up pretty good the little plastic insert is in good shape uh, it doesn't doesn't leak when it's raining um, let's see See on the interior here, it's all original. Uh, so yeah, I mean it ain't perfect, you know, but it's all there. It's uh, real good shape. Windows work. Seat, 
You see, here's the rockers. You see, there's no, there's no rust or rot or anything like that. It's all real solid. Paint's even in good shape still. Carpets, you know, I wouldn't eat off of it, but it's pretty dang clean for being original, as old as it is. Seats in really good shape. Was covered most of its life. Um, no tears or anything. Behind the seat here, some cargo space. This is not cancer, just a little bit of dirt. But there's no rust back there, doesn't leak. Slider window is missing the, uh, the little clasp. But, I mean, it works. So, if you got a new one of those in, screwed it in, screwed a little tab of metal or something on there to lock it if you wanted to, you could. Uh, headliner is in good shape, it's all there, not falling apart or anything. Here's the uh, dash, a box. Got some gauges here. We got an amp gauge for the charging system, a uh, fuel pressure gauge as it has a new, uh, not brand new, but uh, electric fuel pump that was updated, and uh, oil pressure gauge. Four wheel drive shifter. Switches that don't go to anything. I assume they were for the lights that are on the front, but there's no wires actually attached to them, so you could probably hook those up if you wanted to. CD player doesn't work. It's just taking up space in the dash. I just never pulled it out. But you could probably hook hook it up no problem. I just haven't. Let's see, I'll walk around the other side now. Got a little crack in the windshield, as you can see here. Um, I don't ever even notice it when I'm driving because it's kind of up high and on the passenger side. Pretty small. I've owned this truck for mm, two years now and it hasn't gotten any worse. So there's that. Fortunately though, glass in these things is pretty easy to come by if that was something you wanted to fix. These are lights I'm talking about. There's some little lights mounted to the bumper there and then we've got these we got receiver hitches on the front that are welded to the frame but uh, those lights don't actually have any wires going to them but if you hooked them up I suppose they'd work um, underside there brakes around front diff This is the switch for the uh, auxiliary tank that was originally in it. So the switch is still there and on the underside you can see the hoses are all still there. If you wanted to hook up the lines to it you could. If you wanted to install a second tank or a third tank even, I think it's got a three-way switch, uh, you could do that. But right now the line, here's the electric fuel pump and the line just runs along the frame. Just a single single line to the single tank under the back there. Here's the uh, back side of the transfer case. Drive line. We've got two into one exhaust. Three inch exhaust all the way out. Exits behind the rear tire on the passenger side. Inside here. There's a little switch. That's your uh, cutoff for the fuel pump, what auxiliary tachometer there, an odometer that doesn't mean a whole lot, I don't know if it's ever rolled over or not, um, but the motor that's in it is not the original motor, so that doesn't serve much purpose, um, got the idiot light, that light, idiot light doesn't work and neither does that one because they've got the actual gauges here but the fuel gauge and the temperature gauge do work I actually put a new temperature sensor in it uh, maybe about a year ago as you can see the dash itself the dash pad is in really good shape no cracks that's a shadow no cracks no peaks
peeling, anything like that. Uh, vents are all in real good shape. Heater works good, defrost works good, windshield wipers work good, high and low speed. All right, Let's see. Come back around. Someone had asked me if they could see the rear diff, so I, I guess here, here you go. That's a, that's a differential. <laughs> um, put new brakes on this thing. I rebuilt the rebuilt the brakes. Actually, all new hardware when I got it. It had a, a bad wheel seal, so I replaced both wheel seals and the brakes and the brake hardware, and put new bearings in it. Um, leaf springs are all in real good shape. Shocks are good. Here's the uh, there's a fuel filter coming out the tank. This is the tank right above me here. See the uh, inside of this door here. Now, the only spot on the entire truck that has any rust at all is right here. This one little corner on the bottom of the driver's side door, right on the inside. It's right here. That's it. It's all the rust on the entire truck that I could find. So, We don't salt the roads here in Oregon, so we don't have to worry about any of that junk from the wintertime driving. Here's the uh, interior. We got a good heavy duty battery. I wanna say we're running like 950 cranking amps, 770 uh, cold cranking amps at zero. So, which it needs a pretty heavy duty battery because it's got the uh, it's got a this is a 429 big block out of a 1970 Lincoln I'll uh, try and get in here if you can see it I don't know if it'll show up but it does have the Dove C head D0 V D C heads so those are the desirable heads for these for these motors They're higher compression uh, I don't know exactly, but I believe it's supposed to be up there close to 10 to 1 compression. So you need a pretty stout battery to turn it over. Um, but it does fire right up. And having that electric fuel pump really helps with that, especially when it's cold. Uh, got a new master cylinder, brand new, not remanufactured, and brand new vacuum booster. I painted them with a flat black just to keep them from rusting, you know, surface flash rust or whatever. But uh, I installed those myself. Um, they work real good. It's been in the truck for about six, eight months now. Um, got an Edelbrock 1411, I believe. I want to say 700 CFM, but I can't remember exactly. Four wheel carburetor, nice big air cleaner. Power steering. Alternator, it's all in good shape. Uh, it does have a little bit of an exhaust leak. I believe it's on the passenger side right at the manifold. Put some new gaskets on there, take care of that. Again, it's not really been a big issue. That uh, little guy right there, it's a regulator. That's how you adjust your fuel pressure. Right now it's set right where it needs to be. I think it's at four, four and a half PSI. All right, big old heavy duty radiator. Keeps this bad boy cool. Okay, I'm going to go get my uh, extra battery here and we'll take a first spin. Battery for the iPod.